Ladies and gentlemen, I've been away from India to participate in the Group of 20 meeting in Los Cabo. And the last two days I have been in Rio de Janeiro to participate in the Conference on Sustainable Development. My statements on both these occasions are already with you. I'll be happy to answer any question that you may want to ask. Jagdish Chandra from Nadu, At G20, India has indicated to contribute $10 billion to IMF to sort out your biases. But surprisingly, even this well intention to have you wrongly interpreted in the country, would you like to say something? I'm sorry, I didn't get you. This group of India has been wrongly interpreted in the country. Well, we are members of the International Monetary Fund and we would like the International Monetary Fund to play an important role, important role in resolving various difficulties that are now on the horizon in the international economic and financial system. And if the fund is to play its requisite role, it needs the resources. And it has been agreed at Los Cabos that the member countries of the fund will contribute $450 billion to enable the IMF to come to the rescue of countries in need. As a responsible member of the international community, it was our mountain duty also to make our contribution. And let me say that before making this announcement, I had a discussion among the BRICS leaders, and all BRICS leaders have made similar contributions. So I don't think there is anything wrong in our contributing to the IMF. This contribution will be used only when needed. And it will also continue to count as part of India's reserves. Sir, this is Shweta Rajpal, Kuli from NDTV. Sir, uh, during your address in Mexico, you, you spent a long time talking about the sharp slowdown in the Indian economy, uh, putting in place transparent and stable policies, correcting some of the inherent constraints, and taking tough decisions, including controlling subsidies. Do you think uh, the equations have changed enough in the run up to the presidential polls for you to actually push forward some of these decisions quickly? Well, we owe it to our country to take all the necessary decisions which would return the country to a high growth path. There are problems with regard to the fiscal management. We will tackle that problem effectively and credibly. There are problems with regard to management of the balance of payments deficit on the current account. That process, those problems also we will tackle. It will not be proper for me to talk about these things in detail, but you have my assurance that I recognize that we have to work our way to restore the momentum of growth which India needs and which the people of India want the government of India to work for. Also, I think the events of the last couple of days convinced me more than ever before that there are no international solutions to the problems of a country of India's size, of India's diversity. So it, it is obligatory on us, and here I would urge all political parties to work with the government to restore the momentum of growth that this country is capable of, which this country needs. My name is Pavan Kumar. I'm from uh, Z Business Z News. Uh, I have a question on black money. What was the sense uh, during G20 when it came to uh, black money and visa? Has it become irrelevant or there has been much improvement? Well, it's too early to say in one way or the other. The problem is there, but there are no magic solutions available. I think it is a 
slow, going to be a slow process. right from Sahara to network. So rating agencies are continuously uh, showing negative markings to us. Uh, in April, Standard & Poor's has given the rating and now Fitch has given the rating. The retrospective tax reforms are affecting our uh, foreign direct investment widely. So what are we doing in Vodafone case as an example? Any good signal we are going to give? Well, we need foreign investment, both portfolio investment and direct investment. If there are any obstacles which come in the way, if there are any policy impediments, we would address those problems. Effectively, creditable. Thank you. Sir, my name is Javed Ansari. I am from Headline Stray. Where are you, Javed? Yeah. My question is, have you now had time your mind on who will succeed Pranam Mukherjee as the finance minister and the leader of the house, or do you intend holding this portfolio for a while? Well, I have been juggling it in my mind, and quite honestly, I have a number of, I think, num num a number of issues which I have to resolve. It will not be proper for me to pronounce while I am outside the country. When the decision is taken, you will get to know about it. Sir, the, are the Reserve Bank has uh, kept the interest rates unchanged in the mid-quarterly uh, policy review recently. They are not followed. The Reserve Bank of India has kept interest rates unchanged at the recent uh, mid-quarterly policy review. And they have said that uh, Interest might not be a principal factor in impacting growth at this juncture. And you have talked about external situation, domestic policy issues, which is being called uh, by others as policy paralysis, and the interest rates. What is the most important factor that, that is a hurdle for growth now? Also, do you think that the fears of stagflation in the economy are justified? Well, there is no stagflation. There is a slowing down. I am still confident that we can ensure that the growth rate of the economy in the rest of the years improves to about 7% per annum. As regards to the actions of the Reserve Bank, monetary policy is the preserve of the central bank of the country. The central bank of India, that is the Reserve Bank, enjoys autonomy. There are always consultations between the government and the Reserve Bank, but we respect the Reserve Bank's autonomy, and therefore, whatever the Reserve Bank says, well, is, it requires, I think, cons urgent attention on the part of all concerned. Uh, sir, uh, sir, I am Suresh Bhatra from Naidunia newspaper. Uh, are you going to reshuffle your cabinet soon? partners uh, joining the UPA? Well, I think that's legitimate expectations. You will get to know about it when it takes place. important things are really state subjects, land, energy, and water. And when we talk to businessmen, they say that without these three things, they are unable to proceed with investments. So how does the central government propose to resolve issues which can actually be solved only by the state governments? We are a semi-federal polity, and therefore cooperative federalism makes it incumbent on all political parties, those ruling at the center and those ruling in states to work together to find credible ways and means to get this country moving again onto this high growth path, which we have achieved until 2000, 
Sir, uh, Siddharth from CNBC. Uh, the rupee has fallen in the last two days uh, to a record low of below 57. Uh, the latest update on the monsoon is 26% below normal and our deficits continue to be a challenge. Uh, my question to you really is, uh, sir, is there something that we can expect in the days to come? Uh, and won't you be a better finance minister in the interim at least? Well, who will be a finance minister? You will get to know of it when it takes place. Now, as regards the monsoon, I would hate to speculate, but let me say that we are well prepared to deal with any contingency. If there is a shortfall of food grains, that will not affect the that will not affect the availability of food grains. We have a record amount of food stock, far in excess of our needs, and therefore you can depend upon the government to ensure that if at all, God forbid, that there is a shortfall in production, if there is a semi-drought situation, that we are well equipped to meet that challenge. As far as the rupee is concerned, well, we, our operating a system which is market-based exchange rate. We intervened only to curb violent fluctuation. I am confident that the measures that I have outlined, they will return the rupee also to a more stable form. Well, international gatherings are an essay in persuasion. The poor countries need more money, more capital to sustain high growth rates of their economy. They also need increased flow of technology on favorable terms to accelerate the process of their economic growth. A lot of lip sympathy is being paid and has been paid by the developed countries to the idea that we are living in an increasingly interdependent world and that the developed countries have an obligation to help the developing countries. In practice, I think the overall situation on the ground, as I pointed out in my speech at the Rio conference, is not very flattering. So, as far as India is concerned, I have already mentioned, we must plan our economy in such a manner that we cannot expect outside help on a scale which can see us through our difficulty. We have to raise our economy through our own bootstraps. Sir, my solution, sir. You have just uh, requested all the political parties to help uh, the government at this crucial time. Uh, I mean, problems are within the UP, and you are one of the allied TMC. They are opposing each and every reform agenda of the government, and uh, uh, I mean, creating obstacles. So, do you foresee any kind of possible realignment in the UP, and how will you overcome these uh, obstacles? Wait, let me say, as a, as a what about the moratorium package she is asking for? Well, I can't discuss domestic politics while I am on a flight outside our country. I am still confident that it, when it comes to dealing with the basic fundamental problems of our country, all political parties will join hands. And whether it is the Trinable Congress or other, other parties, I expect each one of them play their role in moving this country back to the high growth part that we did, that we are capable of. Last two questions. My name is Abhilash Khandekar. My name is Abhilash Khandekar. 
My question to you is, sir, that Indian economy is liberalized for 20 years now, of which five years you were the finance minister and eight years you were the prime minister. So you know the economy inside out well. What has gone wrong or what has gone right in all these years, which is now debating or forcing us to debate this situation all over again in the 20th year of well, globalization? Well, there have been some high points. Let me say that a lot of things which are not going right, they have their origins outside India. The, 19, the 2008 financial crisis affected our growth rate. Our growth rate fell from 9% to 6.7%. We recovered the next two years, but then came the Eurozone crisis. And therefore, there is a flight of capital from large number of developing countries. Capital is in search of safety wants to go to Germany, wants to go to the United States, and therefore all developing countries, even including China, are experiencing a deceleration of growth rates. So, but having said that, let me say that there have been problems in our own country. We have to work harder than ever before in restoring fiscal balance, we have to work systematically to ensure that the balance of payment problem is managed properly, that the climate for foreign investment, both direct and portfolio, is also favorably motivated. Last question. Uh, sir, I am Vinod that Dhyutri from National Dunia newspaper. Uh, to, to keep India united and intact, would you like to appeal Mamta Banerjee to rethink her decision on Pranav Mukherjee's candidature, number one? And uh, would you appeal to BJP to uh, uh, withdraw their candidate from the presidential post? Well, as soon as we decided upon the nomination of Shri Pranav Mukherjee, I rang up Shri L.K. Advani, I rang up Sushma Suraji, I rang up Arun Jaitliji, requesting them to work with the government and the ruling coalition to ensure that Pranavji's election takes place unanimously. As far as the Trinamul Congress is concerned, Trinamul Congress is still part of the UPA and I still have not given hope that the Trinamul Congress would also find its way to support the candidature of Sri Krishna Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you.